and never mind the Bobcocks. Uh, this is a longer pop master. There's 20 questions tonight instead of the usual 11, but we still have the three from 10 at the end. All these are taken from a pop master book. I have not written these, apart from the last question. So, without further ado, we go on to the first question. Easy and gently. Yep. Feeling my hair again. With which hit making band do you associate the late Bill Linnet? Is it Thin Lizzy, Judas Priest, Deep Purple, or Soft Set? These aren't too bad tonight. Um, there's a couple of stinkers, I think. They're, they're not too bad. Everybody will finish with plus points. I can guarantee it. Well, I hope I can guarantee it anyway. I do like purple. Have you noticed I like colour purple? The answer is Thin Lizzy. Well done, three out of three. Okay. Go on to our next question. This one might not be as easy. Who had top 10 hits in the early 60s with If She Should Come To You and Strawberry Fair? Was it Anthony Newley, Adam Faith, Georgie Fame or Billy Fury? Who had top 10 hits in the early 60s with If She, if she Should Come To You and Strawberry Fair? Ooh, my teeth's not in tonight. This is question two. Probably one of the hardest ones of the night. Will all sorts win? Will Jeff come third again out of three? <laughs> the answer is Anthony Newley. It was Anthony first one for Adam Faith. Person is wrong. It's not really on the pic. Is it on the picture? Oh, you did, but you can hardly see it. You need to have. <laughs> you need to have. Like, how big is your screen? Yeah. <laughs> is your screen like a cinema screen? Because that's really hard to see. <laughs> 50 inches not that big right you, you, you probably know why <laughs> I haven't put the other person in this uh, picture Which hit song from Greece did Hilda Baker and Arthur Mullard kick back into the top 40 in 1978? Was it Hopelessly Devoted to You, Summer Nights, You're the One That I Want, or Greased Lightning? Is it Greased Lightning or Greased Lightning? I wasn't sure and I couldn't be arsed looking up. And I think it's Greased Lightning with D, isn't it? Bugger, choose the wrong one. Yeah. It's Greased Lightning. But, like, he's a wrong un. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wrong un. That's why I didn't put a picture of him up. Uh, the answer is you're the one that I want. You're the one that I want? Right. Question four. Oh, he's definitely a wrong un. Arthur Mullard, definite wrong un. Oh, yes. Yes, he's definite wrong un. <laughs> oh, he, he, he's quite bad now, I have to say. What was the title 
of the song that gave Unit 4 plus 2 their 1965 number one hit. Was it You Ain't Going Nowhere, Green Green Grass of Home, Concrete and Clay, or Cruel to Be Kind? You start it with easy ones. They'll, they get easier. Uh, the answer is concrete and clay. Right. The next one. You know, you know for a fact we're all sorts of getting all these right. I know it's <laughs> it's the battle for second. <laughs> Question five. Which female singer topped the album charts in 1995 with her LP Daydream? Was it Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, or Tony Braxton? Who was it? See what you all went for. Went for the right one. It was Mariah Carey. I think she might have had a song called Daydreamer. That one, she, it was the one I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Question six. Which of these four Oasis singles was the only one to reach number one? Sunday morning call, songbird, go let it out, or who feels love? Which of these four Oasis singles was the only one to reach number one? Sunday morning call, songbird, go let it out, or who feels love? <clears throat> Answered that. Oh, oh, oh rollsert has got one wrong. <laughs> Am I guessing you went for Songbird? Let's see. Yeah, you did. <laughs> it was Go Let It Out. Songbird only got number two. I thought it was which song didn't reach number one. Well, these those are the ones that didn't get the number one. That was the only one that did get the number one. Get it out. Oh, you thought it was Sunday morning call. All right. No, Go Let It Out was the only one to reach number one. And it was from uh, the album Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. Who Feels Love and Sunday Morning Call also come from the same album. They didn't get anywhere near number one. And Songbird was... Uh, 2002. Yeah, the one on the bus is Go Let It Out. Songbird is the one that Liam actually wrote. Right. Yes, my lady. We go on to the next one. Yeah, you can hardly look at the that small these pictures. This is good for your fifty inch screen. <laughs> Easy one this one. Vienna and Dancing with Tears in My Eyes were the two biggest hits for which successful group? I'm pretty sure Songbird and Little by Little were separate singles. I'm pretty sure they were.
was like or little, little by little as I always as call it. <laughs> What's the answer? Ooh, what? Little by Aldi. <laughs> Three people went for Ultravox, two people went for his visage. Okay. It was Ultravox with Vienna. I thought that was the easiest question of the round. <laughs> Oops. All right. At least five people are playing. That's good. That's good. Keep playing. Doesn't matter if you're wrong or right. Keep playing. <clears throat> because, uh, oh, they, because, because all, all sorts might get this one wrong too. <laughs> Who, in 2018, Released the number one album, Staying at Tamara's. Was it Dermot Kennedy, Rag and Bone Man, George Ezra, or John Newman? You, in 2018, released the number one album, Staying at Tamara's. Uh, was it Dermot Kennedy, Rag and Bone Man, George Ezra, or John Newman? John Newman uh, sporting the badger look there in his hair. Interest to see how many got this one. Could have been you for all I know. <laughs> it was George Ezra. George Ezra. George Ezra is the guy on the top right. Rag and Bone Man's the guy with the scribbles on his face, and Dermot Kennedy's the guy. Is that his hair or his hat? Don't know. Anyway. Question nine is this. I just picked the first Girls Aloud picture I saw on Google. It's not my fault it came from FHM. Okay? I wasn't I wasn't looking for Girls Aloud pictures from FHM. It was the first one that came up. Okay? Next one. I'm pr Which 2005 top 10 single by Girls Aloud shares the same title as a 1983 top 10 song by the Style Council? Was it No Good Advice, Long Hot Summer, Shout to the Top, or You're the Best Thing? You're not upset. I wonder if they told them to dye their hair. For that, because usually that Nicola, she's got ginger hair, doesn't she? She looks like she's got black hair in that. And that's Kimberly. She usually has fair hair and she's wearing, and she's got black hair. I wonder if they told them to dye their hair or they photoshopped their hair. It was long, hot summer. Um, he was brown at the time. Was she? I don't. I, I always thought she was ginger. Yeah, shout to the top. You're the best thing. A long hot summer. We're all songs by Style Council. No good advice. No good. I can't even say it. No good advice was a song by Girls Aloud, and it sounded like My Sharona from the Knack. Next one. I haven't super, uh, you know, I haven't taken away a washboard. What is the title 
of the 1965 debut number one hit by the Righteous Brothers. Is it Unchained Melody, Bridge Over Troubled Water, You've Lost That Love and Feeling, or Homeward Bound? I don't know why it just the the two look like uh, Paul Whitehouse and the Fast Show going where's my washboard? It could be two, but it's definitely not two of them. They were Simon and Garfunkel. It was you've lost that love and feeling. Was the debut hit by the Righteous Brothers? You never close. Ah. Uh, I have that somewhere. Paul Sheehan. Yes, luck has run out. Okay, <laughs> everybody's went wrong in that one. Ah, uh, right. this should be question 11 with which 1980s number one group do you associate Eddie Reader the bangles all about Eve fairground attraction or garbage An easy one, finally. <laughs> Some people might not think it's easy. Jeff. Some people might consider this one difficult. I can imagine that jumper is very itchy. Four people got that right. It was fairground attraction. I hate perfect. I think Find My Love was the follow-up to Perfect, and that was even worse. Right. Question 12. There's 20, by the way. In case you all know. He looks like he's wearing those things around his neck. You know, the the, the bracelets that are sweets. Dan should know what they're called. I don't know what they're called. They're not love hearts. But they come in like a necklace. And they're all little sweets. Anyway, this one's a hard one. If I remember right. Man. What was the title? Of Dusty Springfield's 1970 top 40 hit that would become a number one for David Cassidy two years later. Daydreamer. Son of a preacher man. How can I be sure? Or you don't have to say you love me. Yeah, uh, David Cassidy's dead now, by the way. Uh, I remember him being on this morning. Was it this morning? And... Got a bit pissy with Eamon Holmes. Was it Eamon Holmes or Philip Sco? I'm guessing it was Eamon Holmes. I'm guessing Eamon Holmes. Piss him off more. I think Eamon Holmes called him a has been or something like that. Something like, like, like that. It was how can I be sure? To be sure, to be sure. I remember you don't have to say you love me. Uh, about five or six years ago, um, Heather from EastEnders sang it on a on a TV show where you had to dress up like the person. It wasn't stars in their eyes; it was something else. I think it was called something like "Your Face." Your face seems familiar. I think it was called. Bobby Davro was on it. Alexander Armstrong was on it. The Welsh guy. That does the postcode lottery was on it. <laughs> That's all the big names are on it. Anyway, next one. 
this should be easy for some people if you are of a certain age. Here we go. Which top three hit from 1982 did Yazoo, did the flying, what? I can't even read it. Which top three hit from Yazoo did the flying pickets take to number one the following year? When you're young and in love, situation, only you, or don't go. Yeah, it is an easy, well, it's easy for you, Jeff. Well, now. Which top three hit from 1982 did Yazoo sing that the Flying Pickets also got the number one the following year? Well, you are that age. Good, good, good stuff. Ba da da da. It's only you. Next slide, please. Now, I downloaded every single episode of the Tube with Jules Holland and Paul Yates and uh, Moira somebody. Moira somebody? Not Moira Stewart. It was um, Scottish. I can't remember her name. And by chance, Heather Small was on a program from 1987. Muriel Gray, that's her. Yeah. I say. Uh, Heather Small was on the show in 1987 as part of a soul group called Hot House. They didn't have any hits. They were on it in 1987. She was on it in 1987, like six years before she did it big. I think she was only, only like 17 or something at the time, I think. Plus she was the if on the mass singer as well. Bought the single. It didn't get in the charts though. Anyway, the question is What was the title of M People's nineteen ninety three top three hit, which was included in the movie The Fool Monte? Is it Sight for Sore Eyes? Search for the hero, moving on up, or one night in heaven. 57, I think it got to in the charts. And then they went nowhere. I believe Heather Small was then, uh, what was it like, what was it? Right on time, black box. The lady that dances in the, the, and sings in the black box right in time is not a real singer, she's a model. So in the live performances of Black Box, they did in clubs, uh, they got Heather Small to sing it instead. I always thought Heather Small was quite tall. But then I realised um, her hair was about two feet tall. So that that kind of, that kind of, like, you know, not that tall. It's just the hair made her tall. It's moving on up. Moving on up. That one. Greatest name of a person on the left-hand side there. Shovel. Called Shovel. No idea why. He played the bongos. This has got nothing to do with the question. I just couldn't find a picture that represented this well. That's all. Which successful 1960s singer had a backing group named the Pirates? Was it Johnny Kidd, Sandy Nelson, Gene Vincent, or Dale Hawkins? It was either that or using Johnny Depp. And I thought, i just get a kid's picture.
It's Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. I couldn't get right. This is the thing about it, right? I could have put a picture of Johnny Kidd on the screen. But for the fact he wore an eye patch. And that would have given the game away. That's probably why they were called the Pirates. My Perfect Cousin was the only top 10 hit which band from Northern Ireland. If you've been watching the past hour, you'll be able to get this one. <laughs> Sabutio, I always wanted um, as a Christmas present. Never got Sabutio as a Christmas present. I never got Lego as a Christmas present because my mother said I would lose all the pieces. That was her excuse. I've got a cousin called Kevin. He sure to heaven. Um, yeah. But I did get Subutio when I was much older and then I realized it was crap and it hurt my fingers. I don't know what way you flick the players in Subutio, but every time I flick the players in Subutio and it hurt my cuticles of my fingers. Either that or I've got really crap fingernails. <laughs> now you can buy them any day, including Christmas. Word after tip, yeah. As well, you had to put it on a real flat piece. You couldn't put it on a... Because the problem with all our rooms in our house is they were carpets. So if you put it on the carpet, it just, it just like sort of didn't... And you, it couldn't, you couldn't lay it flat on the floor. Plus you had to put like heavy things at each side stop it from curling up uh, the answer was the undertones I quite like that one, do you ever see the one where it was like Subutio players but uh, there was magnets at, at the bottom of the players and you press their head down and then the ball would like move I always wanted another one it was like one where it looked like boost ball but it was electronic and you had four buttons on each side. And they moved up and down. And they had a wee small tiny ball. I was one at one of them as well. Anyway, I'm digressing. <laughs> Question number 17. Which female singer entered the charts at number one at the end of 2006 with her single A Moment Like This? Was it Alexandra Burke, Christina Aguilera, Kelly Clarkson, or Leona Lewis? I must look up what's that, what that's called. Electronic football. Is that the other cat looking in now? Vienna, is that you? Electronic football game. Homey. Homey Super Cup football. Ah. What? Look like that. And the men would move up and down, up and down. Really wanted that, never got that either. As I've said on previous occasions, for my ninth Christmas, I got a pair of binoculars. That was it. Never lived that down. Leona Lewis was the answer. Ninth Christmas, pair of binoculars. Didn't even want a pair of binoculars. Don't know why I needed a pair of binoculars. I live in a council estate. I don't know if my mother wanted to be, you know, when I grew up to be a peeping, peeping Tom. I don't know. Because what she used to do with me was um, she asked me to write what I wanted for Christmas 
on a piece of paper. And then, because we had a stove, she would take the grit off the stove and she would put it up the chimney. This is the thing, though, about my mother and what she did. She never actually looked at that sheet of paper that went up the chimney. I give it to her. She never looked at it. It just went up the chimney. She never looked at what I wanted for Christmas. Sorry, I just... Times are tough. Yeah, times are tough. Never looked at it. That's what I'm trying to say. I wrote down what I wanted. It was like nine or ten things. I didn't want all nine, ten things. They were just like an option. And she took that. And she put it up the flue of the chimney. Yeah. Without even looking at it. She got me a, she got me a five foot snooker table for a... And I, I slept in a six foot room. That's another, another great, great time. <laughs> so I couldn't, I could, whenever I was trying to play snooker in a snooker table in my bedroom, I couldn't play. I had to open the window. I had to open the window to, to play snooker because the queue had to go outside the window. So that meant I couldn't, you know, so, and I had to open the door. The problem, so the only, the only, the only place where I could actually hit the ball was at the top and at the bottom because I couldn't hit at the sides because I had to put the snooker queue out the window and then I had to put the other snooker queue out, out, the, out the bedroom door. Anyway, next one. The 1976 top 10 single, Do the Spanish Hustle, was a hit for which group? Was it the Fatback Band, the Commodores, the Delphonics or Van McCoy. Who was it? From the album Raising Hell. Uh, your mum is a, my mum, yeah. She went in for surgery one time and they had to put her under. And uh, she said to me, uh, I'll, ne I'll never forget it, that she said, uh, oh yeah, the atheist is coming round to put me under. I, I goes, you mean an atheist? Uh, Aye, them boys, right? The atheists are coming round to put her under. <laughs> anyway, it was the fat back band. And two of you got that right. Oh, it's Ronan Keaton and Pudsey Bear and Lulu. Right. Question 19 is this. In 2002, Ronan Keaton had a top five duet with Lulu. What was the title? Was it All Over Again, We've Got Tonight, Last Thing on My Mind, or Father and Son? All, all four of these were uh, Ronan Keaton duets. Ronan Keaton with that uh, Sean Connery singing voice. Some chaps read at night. I'll lie away and watch you sleep. This is cold, by the way, but I take cold tea sometimes. Yes, I'm on brand. I am drinking from my bullseye mug. Christmas present from last year. Sean was from Ireland. Sure, if Sean was from Ireland, he'd still do the same voice. It was uh, we've got tonight. Um, all over again was uh, Kit Roosby. Uh, last thing on my mind was his duet with Leanne Rhymes, and Father and Son. Uh, was it's Cat Stevens, but is it some? Something like Yusuf Islam or something. Uh, Cat, Cat Stevens under his Islamic name. I don't know. 
Right. We've got one question left. Everybody, Yusuf, I was right then, Yusuf Islam. Aye. And it's the three from ten. You have to um, tell me three correct top 40 singles from the next artist. And that next artist is Shakira, Shakira. Right. As there will be red herrings in this. So, only one of these is three correct top 40 hits from Shakira. You have to tell me which one is correct. Here we go. Boom. She Wolf did it again. Some kind of bliss. Whenever, whenever, waka waka, put yourself in my place. Objection tango, underneath your clothes, don't bother. Hips don't lie, illegal, what do I have to do? So only one of these is three correct song titles from Shakira Shakira. This tea's not bad for being cold. Is that, is that a lyric from Dido, wasn't it? He's gone cold and wondering why. Got it by spotting the other artist. The other artist is, for all sorts, red herring artist is... Oh, we're all sorts. Tell me. Kylie. Yes, it's Kylie. Um... Shakira had a song called She Will. Shakira had a song called Did It Again. Kylie had a song called Some Kind of Bliss. Shakira had a song called Whenever Whatever. Shakira had a song called Waka Waka. Kylie has a song called Put Yourself in My Place. Shakira has a song called Objection Tango. Shakira has a song called Underneath Your Clothes. Shakira has a song called Don't Bother. And it's Don't Bother. Hips Don't Lie and Illegal. Both top 40 hits for Shakira. What Do I Have to Do was a hit for Kylie. So that's the end of the quiz. The end of the quiz. Boom. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. We all know it's going to be raw sorts, but who gives a shit? It's who came second. If Rollsworth hasn't won, it's going to make me look like a fool. But uh, let's see who has won tonight's quiz. It's Rollsworth. It's Rollsworth by quite a, quite a, come on now, was there, a, is it end, was it an, any doubt? Was there any doubt? Rollsworth wins with 277,437. Remo Blackout is in second with 96,269. Darth Fire is in third with 94,613. There wasn't much difference there between second and third. Ashton's in fourth with 27,713. Ah, number five, Positive Puppet with minus 35,662. And Anatomical Bombs in sixth with 38,171. End the game now. End the game. End the game. So that means. I have to get my head away. That makes sense. Because Roll Sorts is a winner of a prize. But what's the prize? Uh, it's a virtual prize. And the virtual prize tonight comes from 1994 edition of Funhouse. Uh, this is Post Bullet Hat Sharp. Uh, and I can't remember what the prizes are. Uh, here we go. What do we got? What do we got? Yes, post mullet sharp. You don't actually see him. Here we go. Catch the flying fox and sink these inline skates. Ooh. Fire down the fireman's pole and pick up a personal stereo. Ooh. This fishing set is the bait bobbing in the ball run. All the coolest computer games are hiding in a hole in the wall. Freeze down the bobsleigh and crack a backpack. Abracadabra, it's no trick. Take the tumbling tube for magic lessons. 
bash through the balloon tunnel to bag these board games. Beat the bully black and blue, and then this mystery tour is for you. Sift through the trash cans and save some mouth organs for your class. <laughs> Muscle through the monster maze and win a tandem for a day. The wacky wild slide hides a Sega Mega Drive. Ooh. Nip up the danger net and clock a trendy watch. See you on the Scouter Belter and win a blow-up alligator. Scale the net ladder to snatch this stencil pack. And anyone for tennis? Slip and slide and this racket is your prize. What? An inflatable what? An inflatable what? What was that? A fucking a blow up alligator. <laughs> what the fuck would you need with that? A day, the wacky wild slide hides a Sega Mega Drive. Nip up the danger net and clock a trendy watch. See you on the Scouter Belter and win a blow up alligator. <laughs> Scale the net ladder to snatch this stencil pack. And anyone for tennis? Slip and slide, and this racket is your prize. Hey. A, bl a blew up alligator. Right. <laughs> a bloody. Right. There we go. There we go. Get out there. Right. right. Let's have a look and see what they actually did win. Did they actually win uh, the. I was in the sick. Right, what Which will show you. Yeah, yeah. All right, right, right. They're away in, they're away in. Right. Right. What did they actually win? The big moment. Stand by. Come over here, Gab. Come on, Jenny. Right, this is what we've managed to get. You all right? Okay, you have managed to get a backpack each, box games each, mystery tour each, fishing set each, inline skates each, personal stereo, Sega Mega Drive, tandem for a day, oh, the bottom of one of our explosions, and computer games. And I heard the power price sound, so let's bring it on. Come on, man. I'd say that's a win there. They got the games out. Imagine if they got the games and they didn't actually get the Mega Drive. <laughs> this is it. Are you ready? Think, confer, 10 seconds to answer, only accept first answer. Ready? Many sports have goals and goal nets. Can you name three sports that use goal nets? Football, netball, basketball. Football, netball, basketball. Football, netball, basketball. Yes, you got it! What can I say except congratulations, you've done it, you've won the power prize, and we'll see you soon on Funhouse. Bye! What's the power prize? They never said what the power prize was. What the f what's the power prize? What? What's the power? They never said what the power prize was. By the way, uh, I don't have enough, I don't have time to do this tonight, but what I was... Uh, looking at before I went on was um, this e sound with is, the back of was, the tongue high. Was how, how to speak like a rummy. It's just not quite as long. But in the Midlands accent, the back of the tongue sits a little lower, leaving more space at the back of the mouth. Let's listen to Mirren. Right. Dainty. Dainty. Very. Very. Happy. Happy. Silly. Silly. Because I, I have been looking at Twitter and there was a thing. Uh, that'll be educational for next time. Uh, supposedly, the worst accent in the UK is a Birmingham accent. So next time out, we're going to be learning how to speak Birmingham. But Dan, is, is Dan on yet? Because it's, 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 well, it's not, it's, not, it's not time yet. It's nine o'clock now.